Hi everyone, it's Sherry with Blessed Bobbles, and I'm so, so glad you're here. I'm going to be finishing up, I hope, <laughs> the 45 pounds of ShopGoodwill.com jewelry. It's been a long run with this um, string of episodes with this big, big box, but it's been really great. Just so many fantastic pieces, so we're going to finish up that today. And we're also, I'm going to show you some extra pieces like I've been doing, sort of throwing in some of my catch and release pieces and some other special pieces that I have for sale. So stick around, okay, because you're at the baubles. First, if I may, I'll give you some instructions on how to purchase any of the jewelry if you see something you like. Please email me at capecodebaygirl at gmail.com and let me have these four pieces of information. I'll need the video name and the episode number, the timestamps of when your pieces show, a brief description of those pieces, and the prices. And I know it seems a bit nitpicky, but this is really what I need. Sometimes I'll have a new subscriber watch older videos and they don't realize that they are older videos. So this is always a great system. I know other YouTubers use it, so please, please do send me this information. And then we won't have to back and forth with emails and lose your place. So that's another thing I want to explain, is that I do answer my emails in the order that they are received. So I don't mind if during any episode you open your email and you email me the things that you are sure that you want with the episode number and all that information. And if you email me one email at a time just to get it to me and get it in line, I don't mind many emails at all. Um, but do be sure that you want those pieces. I don't want you to email 10 pieces just so you get one. Do you know what I'm saying? So just thought I'd explain that. And also our iconic subscribe sign. I'm not much of a technology person, so this is my subscribe sign. So here we go. Ding, ding, subscribe, hit the bell if you like the channel. I do hope you'll subscribe. I'd love to know that you are a new subscriber, and I'd love to know if you have been with me all along and how long you've been here. So do leave me a comment. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for that. And next, I know that a lot of you like to know what YouTubers are wearing, so I'll just go over some of the pieces. This is one of the most incredible Laramar pieces that I have bought. I love the stone, I love the ring, it's all sterling, I love the setting, I've really been enjoying this, and this fits me really well. Sometimes I'll get a ring and I'll think it'll fit, and it doesn't. Now this carnelian ring I got a long time ago from Shop Goodwill as a single purchase, and I just love it. It brings me lots of great memories of starting my channel. This one I got this week, and this is a red coral inlay sterling silver ring. It's quite different looking. I did pay up for this, so I'm going to have to think of what kind of price I'm going to ask. And it is marked inside right here. Let me take a peek at it and remind myself what it says. Oh, so it says Philippines. And... Let me see if it's marked on the underneath. Yes, and then underneath it's marked sterling. So I'm wondering if this is an older piece because it has the full word sterling. And that is sometimes a sign of older pieces. So I'll give you a really good look at it. There's all your red coral inlay. And these shiny marks are also sterling silver sort of windows, if you will, or inlay pieces too. And then this is the side view. And of course, that's the bottom. It curves a little. It's a lot of sterling. It's quite beautiful. And then it's almost like an arrowhead. Maybe some of you will know more about these pieces than I do. It's a little bit more narrow on this side than this. So maybe that means something. I don't know. But it's a lovely ring. It's in great condition. And it pairs up really nicely with my my other carnelian ring. So I did pay up for this, but I do want to, I bought it to sell, so let me measure it so you can know the size if you've fallen in love with it and might want to buy it. 
it looks like it's about an eight and a half. There's our eight, and this is our nine. So the tip of it falls on an eight and a half. Now, when you go with a little bit wider band, you want to go up a little bit in size because the band takes up room on your finger. So I'd say eight and a half, but it's always great to see a ring on the ring sizer because that's much more of a way you can know if it's going to fit you. So there it is. It's quite lovely. It goes really great with the other blue colors. And yeah, I paid up for it. So I'm going to say 55. If someone loves it, let me know. I'll show you one more time. It says sterling inside in that top portion and Philippines. It's got a beautiful sterling, beautiful color to the metal. Okay, next is my bow jewels, not bow jewels, my vintage bow sterling silver ring that you've seen before. And this is my real genuine pearl cluster ring and it is on all sterling as well. I got this a couple weeks ago, and I do love it, but I think I'm going to catch and release just because I need to keep jewelry moving and be out there buying new things. It is all sterling. It is also sizable, and I've worn it on many different fingers, so this is probably my largest size, and this is smaller, and of course that's smaller, and I've worn it on all three fingers because I've been able to just adjust the size. I'm not worried about that because it's not terribly thick like it's gonna split. And I think you all saw me test this for sterling, but it is all sterling and look how many pearls there are. So I am ready to release this beautiful thing. I will measure what size it is at right now. But again, you can size it all kinds of ways. I feel like it's dark over here. Let's see. This is sitting right at a nine, which that sounds right because that's right about what I am on this finger. So this one I am going to sell too and it's quite old. Oh, let me see if there's a mark inside. It's in great condition. And it is marked right there. And again, I did test the metal. I can't remember if I did it on camera, but I certainly did. Let me see. It says 925. And it says a number 8, so it must have originally been at a size 8. So there you go, a pearl cluster ring. Look at the different colors in those pearls. I just think it's so lovely and the movement when it moves around as you're wearing it. It's so pretty, but I've got to keep things moving so I'm encouraged to buy more. And I'm going to say 65 on this one. A lot of pearls, lots of work went into this and sterling silver and sizable. You can't beat that. The next one, you all know this one. This is my latest Larimar ring that I'm so in love with. I said it looks like Jesus is coming right out of the sky. And that one's not going anywhere for a while, if ever. So I'm loving that one. And this is my diamond. Um, I think it was a three-year anniversary ring. And I do love this. I did have quite a substantial diamond ring at one time. It was a European cut. It was prince. I had it set in a princess setting with just four prongs to show off the stone, and it was fantastic. I wish I could show you that today, but that's been passed on. And yeah, that's it for jewelry. Oh no, it's not. What am I thinking? This bracelet is just absolutely stunning. I bought it from, well, I bought a whole lot of sterling silver jewelry that I've yet to offer everyone because I'm waiting to do live sales and this is one of the pieces and I just think it's so incredibly beautiful look how thick it is all those chains and then it comes around this way and it looks to me like there's a, a gold bezel around the stone and it's sterling everywhere else and almost like a watch sort of band I think that's to, so it can move on the wrist. It's so comfortable. 
it's so heavy. But the strangest thing is there's no mark anywhere on this bracelet. So it does look like it's gold on the tips of this as well. I'll show you the back. It's just incredibly stunning. I have tried to figure out the stone. Whatever it is, I do think it has dye enhancing, which is not unusual. And it has like a gold part here. So I don't know what that stone is. I've tried my, my gem app doing some scans on it and it doesn't know what it is. And I haven't had a minute to research what kind of a stone would have these gold pieces in it. I thought that would be lapis, but would lapis be this color? Not sure. So I have this incredibly gorgeous bracelet. I have to figure out a price. Can you see how the gold, how the bezel is gold now? From this angle, I hope. So gold up here and sterling here and just as heavy as can be and beautiful. I've looked all over. I don't know where I'm missing the mark, but I've tested it three different times and it certainly is solid sterling silver. I can guarantee that. I do want to sell the bracelet. I do love it, but I wish I could give you a mark on it. There's just no mark. I thought of taking it to the jeweler and having them do that x-ray thing but I do know that it's solid sterling and I will guarantee that so if you bought it and found out it wasn't which I know you're not um, I do honor my purchases so my sales so if you didn't like it or something you can always send it back and I can give the money back I only say that because it's not marked and it just is driving me crazy but it's so beautiful so I'll go get the scale and we'll measure that and we'll get to work on the rest of this bag. But I just had to show you that. The toggle clasp is gorgeous. Look how easy it is to put on. Just like this. Look, and to take it off, I need no one to help me. That was so awesome to me. So I'll go get the scale and let you know the weight. Okay, so for the first time ever, I did it. I videotaped 45 minutes and forgot to turn the camera on. Oh my goodness. So I'm going to have to do this all over again. And I don't know what I said before or what I did, but I'm going to have to redo it all. I think we were about to measure this bracelet for how much sterling it has. So it's on grams. And it's 48.1 grams. Give you a good look at that. So, oh my gosh. Oh my goodness, I did it. I didn't turn the camera on for all that time. So that means the video is gonna go up late. So I can't remember how I finished talking about this bracelet, but here's the back. I can't remember if I said the part about, I will guarantee that it's solid sterling um, that it's beautiful, that it tests sterling, that I did a gem app test on the stone and don't know what the stone is. It does have some gold flecks right there that I can do more research. And I pointed out that it does have a gold bezel around there and it's just a substantial bracelet. I can't even remember if I measured it on the other video. And if I go back and watch, that will take too long and I won't get a video up tonight. So let me show you how incredibly easy it is to put on and take off in case you didn't see that part. And if I'm repeating anything, I hope you'll forgive me. So that's all it takes to put it on. And this is all it takes to take it off. Absolutely love that. And I think I pointed out the way that it moves with the watch sort of parts connecting it. Oh, and there's the back of the stone as well. It's just hunky, it's beautiful. It's in fantastic shape, very heavy sterling bracelet. And I also talked about the links. You can take a few off or add a few to size it if you need to. And that's one of the easier ways to size a bracelet. They're not always easy to size because like for this one, look, the clip goes right into there. 
Maybe I could put one there if I needed to, but you know what I'm saying? Some of them are easier to size than others, and this one is about the easiest I've seen. You can just add a few links in the middle and not risk hurting anything on the sides. So here's what it, where it measures, sorry, and it's gold on these tips too. So if you recognize the maker or the style, please let me know. Um, I tried to Google search a picture of it, and when you search a bracelet, it keeps thinking it's a necklace. So I think it's almost a size seven. Again, I looked everywhere for the marks. I did test it, it's guaranteed solid sterling. And I'm going to say it's pretty heavy, substantial. I'll say 165 on that and see what you think. Look at that. Beautiful bracelet. And <laughs> it's terrible because I can't remember what I said yet on the other one that this was from a lot of sterling silver jewelry that I bought that I haven't shown you all the pieces to yet some substantial sterling that I bought with this. So whoever had this, they have some other beautiful pieces that I bought too. So I know that they knew what they were doing. Okay, I hope I don't miss anything. And now I have to do this all over again because, oh yeah, it just didn't, it didn't take on the film. So, all right, let's see. I took out this necklace from India talked about that I had washed it because it smelled like perfume and it came out pretty good. It's not too bad as far as the smell. It is a little bit worn, of course, but maybe you might want it as a craft piece. I'm not sure. I was pointing out that it's foil back on some of these stones. So right about right about here you can see that there's foil on the back of the stone so that when you flip it over it gives it a lot a lot of extra sparkle but these stones right here are not foil back they are you can see them right through and those are the stones that test above glass into the tourmaline range and there's one two three four of those they do have a little bit of a purple hue and the sparkle is just amazing. So that's this necklace. Um, I thought, what did I say about it? Um, since the metal is a bit worn, it may be a great piece just to buy for the stones or you can, you know, do whatever you need to with this. Craft with it, take these stones out, use them for something else or wear it and love it, whichever you think. And I think I priced this at 20 because of the four tourmalines. So I thought $5 a tourmaline, that would be worth it. So $20 on that piece. Next, oh, I'm such a person of like, I love the unboxing where I don't see anything until I show it to you because then I can give you my reaction. But now I've seen a couple of these pieces, but it's okay. This is a carved piece of... I think is a piece of uh, quartz. It does look a bit jade, but it tests, well, it tests up in the, it's stone, we know that. And I'll test it over here. And on this side, yeah, it doesn't quite go to quartz. So I don't know what this is, but it is a carved stone. And it looks like one of those like, um, fossil type pieces. The leather part of it is not in good shape. It is worn, so you'd have to replace that or put it on something new. And I do have some things like that if you need. But if you wanted it just for the stone, I think that's a great stone for, let's say, $10 for carved stone. Hope you love that. Then we have a Leah Sophia bracelet. And this is the bracelet where I realized I wasn't recording because when I saw the Leah Sophia, I also saw the number not moving on my phone. I was like, oh. 
So beautiful Leah Sophia, but not a good stretch on it anymore. So perhaps it's good for the stones. Beautiful olive color. They are not all the way see-through, but just a gorgeous bracelet at one point. And we're gonna put it in our craft jar. Gosh, I wonder if we missed this whole part of it too. I think we did. So I'm gonna put this in the craft jar. Craft jar name is Dinah. And I write it here, but I also put the piece of paper because by the time we get done filling it, we won't be able to see the name. So Leah Sophia is our first piece in our jewelry hospital. Now the next piece is this that I pulled out of the bag when I wasn't recording, and it is acrylic. So it's made to look like a druzy, but it's not a real stone druzy, but it's pretty. I'll put that in there. And then this bracelet, I went through all the testing of the amethyst on video, and these test as some kind of stone. In fact, they all test as stone, but it's just not in a great, you know, not in a good stretchable condition. So you've got different stones, all testing, a couple of beautiful amethysts, and I'm putting that in the craft jar. So we got that far. And then I found this necklace that is glass beads here with a cat eye effect, and they are on copper wire, some more faceted beads. And these are like a thermoset moon glow type of stone, those lighter color. And that necklace matches the earrings that I got off of the earring board. So you can see that is exactly that stone. So I had talked about this and this measures 16 inches. It's a cutie matching earrings. And I'll say five dollars on that set okay what else did we see this beautiful bracelet it's so gorgeous the stretch is wonderful faceted light pink crystal beads and a cat eye effect glass there and i know that because i already tested it with on my previous bit of recording that i didn't do the pink is lovely i do love the stretch and it's just a great piece nice heavy glass very sparkly and i'll say eight dollars on that this piece i went on about for a little bit it is acrylic or clear lucite and silver hearts there's no like clasp or chain or anything else on it but i thought wow you could make a necklace with matching earrings or look how many pendants and earrings you could get out of this it's a beautiful piece or you could just hang it on a chain and enjoy it that way too because that is lovely so I love this piece and I would say all of those pieces are worth definitely hmm, let's do I'm sorry I'll say 15 for that it's just gorgeous Okay, then I had brought out this necklace. It is faux pearls. They have green tones to them. Very colorful, AB coated, sort of like an oil slick color. Silver, white, green faux pearls. Some more of those beautiful crystals. And the necklace comes down this way to this type of a pendant. This is acrylic, it's like an olive green. So you have these silver beads here and these little dangles and the necklace comes down like this. And it's a stretch necklace, so isn't that cool? So if someone has trouble with their hands and they can't do clasps, that's a pretty alternative for sure. So, oops, let me measure it for you. Even though it stretches, it is sitting at a 20 inch um, size right now. So we'll say $7 on that piece. Next is this more clear acrylic or lucite. That's a lovely faceted bead. So is that one. That's so cool. That looks reminds me of chandelier crystal. Now it is lucite, not crystal. 
and there's some sandy colored wood beads. It's very cute. The stretch is excellent. And I'll say six on that. Next, we have this very beautiful bracelet that I was talking about before. And I was going on about the different color greens and all the facets on those stones. And then look at these beautiful, again, like an oil slick type of crystal in there. Beautiful stretch on it. And when I turned it over, I noticed that it was signed Liz Claiborne. There it is right there. So just a beautiful piece. Again, great stretch, nothing missing. I did try it on, which I don't usually do, but it's just, it's very striking. Quite beautiful. So there's that piece. Vintage Liz Claiborne, excellent condition. And I'm going to price this up a little because it's gorgeous. And I think it's worth it. That's a good maker. Uh, I think I showed you where it sits on... Um, sits about a six and a half but again it's a stretch so there you go and i'm going to say 18 on that i really think it's worth that it's a beautiful piece all glass okay next are these earrings that i saw before these are lovely probably porcelain yellow pink purple flowers with the green leaves and I had pointed out that this one is a little bit chipped on that one flower. Now, Anne, if you're watching, <laughs> you made me laugh so much the other day in an email to me. You said that I say, one of my catchphrases is, just so you know. So I guess I say this, just so you know, this has a little chip in it. I do think it is still beautiful doesn't you know you almost can't notice but that's up to you to decide and they are marked on the back made in England and they are twist back earrings so just a lovely pair and because of the little chip I'll say it's five dollars on those next I don't think I saw any of these yet so that's great we're right back where we need to be okay so I see some red earrings. Oh, and they don't match. That's a boomer. So this guy feels like ceramic. This is like an acrylic plastic faceted. Oh, they're so cute. And this is like um like a glowing button. I don't know what to do with these. Well, I guess I'll put them in the craft jar, right? Let me see if this one's marked at all. Oh, they're so cute. Beautiful red colors. And I'll put these three in our Dyna craft jar. Next is, what are you? It looks like a Lucite foil bead. I was looking at some things last night on the internet. I could not believe how much necklaces that were lucite that had foil in them were going for. I was like, what? It, they were a lot, so I'm not sure what it is about that. Maybe they're just really collectible right now. That metal does look sterling. Um... Maybe not this metal, but this does a little bit. So, gosh, I don't know what to do with that. Should I put it on a chain? I have some chains over here. Could put it on one. Let's see if I can get it. Sometimes you can't get them over the, the end of the chain, you know. Let's see what this one does. Because I think this pendant is really pretty and probably worth it to put on a necklace. Yay, we got it. So that's nice, and now we have a necklace. Beautiful, this is a nice chain. I take the extra chains and I put them aside and use them for things like this or stack them together. So here you go, beautiful silver tone chain, great condition. 
And it's a nice long chain too. It measures 24 inches. And there's your lovely Lucite pendant. And I'm gonna say 15 on this. I just think that's cool. And for some reason they really do are expensive. So if not, you'll let me know because I won't hear from you, but if I got it right, I'll hear from you right away. So thank you for that. Ooh, look at this. This is so beautiful. We have a vintage bracelet, six pieces to it, shiny gold tone, fold over clasp. Looks like it should be signed. I don't see any signature, but wow, is that beautiful. That's a really pretty green, very chunky nicely made. Let's make sure the clasp works beautifully. Wow. I like how the gold swirls around. That's very 60s looking to me. The bracelet measures um, six and three quarters, I'd say. Wow. It's just in great condition. Really lovely. And a very pretty green. I'm going to say $12 on that. That is something I think that would last quite a while. So $12 on that piece. Next we have, oh, this is pretty. So we have gold beads and some charcoal gray. That's going to look nice with one of my <laughs> color jewelry bag sets. So I am going to put this one aside and just see what becomes of it. It does look a little bit small though. But it is a stretch. That's yeah, not bad. So I'll put this aside. I do sometimes want to test the gold beads because you never know. I have a gold bead, like an add a bead necklace for sale on eBay right now. And sometimes you just really have to check these to make sure that someone didn't craft with it and use real gold. So I'll put that aside and just check on that one. What have we got here? Oh, that's beautiful. It's on a real leather chain. Looks like it has a toggle clasp. A little bit of tangly tangle. It does appear to be sterling, but let me have a look. So we have a necklace pendant that is already, it already has a mark on it, like a it's already been monogrammed. I'm looking under here for a mark for sterling. Not seeing one. Um, let's see if it's magnetic at all. It's not magnetic. The problem is I just don't know if someone is going to have these initials. So what do you think? Is it a RDM? Maybe you do. Maybe you have those initials and this would be awesome, but I would like to know if it's sterling. So I'm going to take another peek at the, at the um, toggle. It needs to be wiped off a little bit on the toggle. But just in case, is that a little gemstone on the edge? Let's see. See how it has that coloring? It's not the coloring of verdigris. It's a color that, I don't know what it is, but it wipes off pretty easily. I'm looking for something to wipe it off with. But there's another color green that doesn't wipe off that easily. And that's a more set in verdigris, I guess. But this is wiping right off, see? So that's not an issue. We just need to know if this is sterling. Now, is there anything else in the bag that needs to be tested? Let's see. I don't think so. Let's just go over these things, and if there is, then we'll do it together. Ooh, that's lovely. Mother of Pearl torsade-type necklace with some black beads here. They're having like different coloration on them. Maybe it's wood? 
I'll have to look at that closer. But it's really pretty otherwise with the gold beads in between and the clasp is lovely. Called a fish clasp. You want to look on there for any marks of like 14 karat or something. So I'll take a quick look at that. Don't see any. It's in really good condition though. Let's look close at these beads and see what's happening. Maybe they're wood and they're painted over. Hmm. Here, have a look with me. Isn't that cool? I think they're wood and they're painted unless you know differently. But they have like a pearlescent iridescence to them. Very interesting. Yeah, they don't go up at all, so they're probably wood. And then we have the mother of pearl. And let me just test these little black other beads here. Those are glass. It's pretty. I love it. Nice looking piece. Needs a little bit of fiddling here. Let me measure it. It is 22 inches long. Mother of pearl gold tone beads. Beautiful clasp, and I'll say $8 on that piece. Okay, wow, 45 pounds. I can't believe we're at the end of it. That was a lot of jewelry. Woo! Now, first, gently rub together. You never have to rub pearls hard. But I can already see here, this is why you want to look at the drill hole, and you can see that they're painted over. And they're a white color, so I would say they are white glass that are painted over with a gold tone color. It's like a coppery gold. And the stretch is not great. It doesn't come back when it stretches. It's a very good looking faux pearl bracelet for sure. But because of the stretch, and it's heavy, so it's probably white glass, I'm going to put it in our Dyna craft jar. So there it goes. Next is this colorful beaded bracelet. I felt like I showed this before, um, or there's two of them, looking at the pendant to see if it's marked and it's not, and I'm pretty sure that these are all gemstones. That is definitely amethyst. Those are glass. Those are a gemstone. These are going up to, this is probably a dyed quartz. So you have some dyed quartz and some, can't think of this one. Come on, Jasper. So all gemstones except for the glass right there. So I'll say, um, let's do $8 on that one. Now, I love these cat eye glass pieces. They are so pretty. This one has a barrel clasp, looks older, looks like hematite, maybe beads in between, just a really pretty, you know, 1970s necklace that lots of people wore. What a great throwback. You can get extenders for barrel clasps that will have this end going here, and I think you know what I'm saying. So there we go on that cutie cutie. Barrel class works great. Silver tone beads in between. And it's a choker at about 15 inches. So I'll say $5 on that piece. Okay, now we have, hmm. A silver tone bracelet. It's got good weight to it. The stretch is great, and it just looks like it has some lovely um, enameling on it. A little bit swirly. This is in really good shape. It's nice and shiny. Needs a little wiping, but it's a good one. Very pretty. And I'll say $5 on that. It's a lovely color blue. This guy, I remember seeing at some part of the video. 
and just thinking it was very beautiful and primitive looking. The cross is loaded with rhinestones, and I think it's purposely on this older looking um, brass chain and hammered out looking pendant, but it's nice. I like it when something's all brass like that. And look at the chain. That's a good looking piece. Really pretty. Measure it for you. It is almost 30 inches long. And I think it hangs nicely right in front of the pendant. That's a great piece. Let me look a little closer at the rhinestones. Make sure there's nothing missing. They are all there. There you go. So beautiful piece, nice and long, very old looking. I'll say $6 on that. I wanna to get to some of the other pieces I have too. Now what is this? Maybe it's a necklace. So this looks like tiger's eye. It's all tiger's eye, I believe on a wire and let's see I don't know if that's big enough to go over the head or maybe this is a bracelet does this slide I don't think it's sliding so I don't know oh <laughs> there is the clasp oh my goodness okay what kind of clasp is this oh I hate to pull on things sometimes they're magnetic and they're strong how are you going to open there, buddy? Let's try this. Not opening. Okay, let me see. Oh, yes, it is. Just needed a little more time. Okay, let me take a peek for any marks. Sometimes it can say sterling and they're really tiny. But I don't know on this one. So I did find the class. So it's a very cool tiger's eye necklace with sort of a wide drop design. Let's see. It is magnetic. It's cool, but I think I'm going to put it in the craft jar for the beads. And if you love it, it's still wearable and you can wear it. So we'll put that in there. Okay. Next, I love that earring. A few more things. And wow, I can't believe we emptied the bag. This is the fourth bag of all four from 45 pounds. Can we have a round of applause? Woo, we did it. That was a lot of jewelry. So we have an art glass across. Almost looks like people in there. It does have a gold tone foiling in the, in the glass work. A really pretty piece. Let's see what's going on with the bale. I don't know, it just has like some crimp marks right there. But it's a very pretty piece. I will say $3 on that. And then, wow, this looks like Mother of Pearl. And look how those rhinestones are set in there. This is lovely, and I think I'm seeing Liz Claiborne name again yep there it is lc beautiful tree with rhinestones look how nicely it's made this claiborne tree i know it's not christmas time but it's always good to get things put them in your jewelry box so you can have them when the season comes very lovely and i'll say six dollars on that okay we have a pair of earrings that are very light. Boy, things are jumping. They don't appear to be metal. I'm sorry, they don't appear to be gemstone. They're on like a gold tone metal, but they are cool looking. I don't see a name. The backs are nice too. Just really cool looking with a, like an opalescent design, but I'm pretty sure they are made of acrylic. So I'll say $4 on those. Then we have a super beautiful crystal heart.
pendant. I'm trying to hold on to this one too. I think my phone is tilted a little bit differently today. It's very sparkly. Nice bail on it. Um, I don't know if I have a chain that will fit through that. No, I don't. At least not right here. So I guess I'll just sell the pendant as it is. It does look like it's a genuine crystal pendant. Very beautiful. I'll say $4 on the genuine crystal pendant. I'm gonna take care of that little tiny guy. Then we've got some earrings to go over. This, I have to confess, I had to take the earring wire off because I needed it for another pair. So we have cowbells and they're gonna go in our craft jar. Um, we have lovely cream color and red clip-on earring. This is so pretty. I don't know if we have a second one, and I don't know if we have a second one of these, so. Let's bring over the old ugly earring tree, oh my gosh. And see if I have another red clip-on. Oh, there's the other rose earring. So that's cute. I will give you some backs that go with them. They do look older because they have those little sections on them that the back clicks on. So white roses, acrylic, I'll say $3 on those. Now, I'm not seeing another one of these, so that's sad, but it can go in the craft jar. Or maybe I should hold on to it and clip it onto a chain. Or you can. You can clip it onto any gold chain you have and instantly have a pendant. So that's a good idea. Now, before we get into the earring tree, I do want to let you know that I'm ready. Oh, I'm ready to let the cat earrings go. We found these together. They are like a Murano type glass. The cats are so cute. And the faces are on both sides. That is all art glass. They are 100% sterling silver earrings. And they are the cats. And a lot of you just love these. I really don't wear them as much as I thought, so I am gonna do the catch and release. Just look at those cute babies. And my cats are black and white, so they're just so cute though. And again, both sides, all in excellent condition. And they're just special. I'm gonna say, let's do 18 on these. Sterling silver and all art glass, just precious. And I do want to get a little bag to put these in because I don't want them to go anywhere. So there's the art glass cat earrings, sterling silver for 18. Next from the earring tree is a pair of faux pearl studs. Nice color to them. They have something on the back. It says Roman. Now, I don't know if they're Roman earrings, but looking at the back and how they're nicely made, I think maybe they are. That's just a nicely made earring. So it's possible that we have a pair of Roman faux pearl earrings, and I'll say four on those. Then we have these faux pearl earrings as well. They are light blue, a medium blue, and then they have these purple seed beads in the middle. They're on some silver wire. Lovely color. And I'll say three dollars on this pair. Next is, these look like a pair of vintage, um, I find that everyone forgets the name of this stone, but it's, um, I'm not going to forget it. I'm not going to forget it. It is malachite, yes. So I think these are malachite stone, but let's see. Hmm, I don't know what malachite is supposed to test on the gem tester. So I'm not going to say they are malachite because I can't be sure. But they are malachite looking, and they're on like a vintage gold brassy tone color. And I will say four on these. 
Next is a pair of brass earrings, which is kind of cool. And they have just this little black color bead. It does go up a little bit above glass. I think these are onyx. So a brass earring with a piece of onyx and yeah, they're just in good shape. And I just love when things are made of brass. I think it's very cool. So I'll say $6 on the, um, help me guys. Yeah, on these earrings with the black stone, onyx. Yes, thank you so much. Okay, now we have this pair of acrylic, like a brownish color. Let's see if these are a stone or anything. These are going up too as if they're onyx. So maybe we have another pair of onyx from someone that liked onyx earrings. They are an oval shape, silver tone hooks on, and I'll say five on these. Now, these are the pair of wolf earrings they were on my table. I can't remember if um, if these were from the 45 pound box or what. I just don't remember. There's so much has happened. So I'm gonna give them a quick little polish. They are gold tone wolves and that's the back of them. I will say uh, $6 on those. Now, these are so cute. These are very vintage. They are a pink, but they're like, um, what kind of pink would that be? I like a peachy pink. Just a cute little button vintage earring. I think these are made of metal with enamel paint over them. So sweet. And I'll say $4 on those. Next is this pair of earrings, and I have lots of great pieces ahead, so don't go away. I've got some beautiful necklaces to show you. We're going to test that sterling. So these, I don't know what they're made of. Blue and green, pretty colors. I don't know, maybe a petal was actually formed. Can't say. But I think I'm going to put those in the craft jar so you can wear them or craft with them. Next are these pink faceted glass and these sort of pearlescent uh, like feather type things. Very dangly earrings, fleur-de-lis, and gold tone metal. There's the back. And we'll say $3 on these. Next pair. Like, did we have a necklace that these match? Because look how beautiful these are. I love that stone on the top. All the rhinestones on the bottom. And this lovely orange color. They look very J. Crew, But I don't think they're marked. Can't see any marks on them. And I will put some backs on them. These feel nice quality. Probably went with some kind of a set. Really pretty. I'll say six on these. Then we have, oh, these are beautiful. So these are on sterling silver wires. And they are a beautiful pink crystal with a gold bead cap sort of filigree style. These are really lovely. If you have to wear sterling, there's your marks right there on that flat part. And they are just gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful, real crystal pink color earrings. And I will say for these sterling guys, let me get another bag. I think if you went to a store to buy sterling earrings, you can't get much nowadays, but they're beautiful. I think these are worth 16 for sterling. Okay, so I'll say 16 on those. 
Now, we have a pair of dyed howlite, or maybe magnesite, not sure. But they're in great shape, they're on silver tone wires, and if you have any turquoise jewelry or anything of that color, this is your little matchy color. So, we'll say $4 on these howlite or magnesite earrings. Boy, we're getting down there on my earring thing. Okay, this I did finish up because the pendant was not on a chain. And this is where I took the earring wire off the cowbell earrings to finish these. So we have these acrylic, beautiful, real flower encased earrings. And they are so much like that bracelet that we had in the other bag. Remember that? They are the exact same like amber color to the acrylic and maybe I should be calling it um, Lucite and here's the pendant and I thought they must go together the bail is different than the earring parts but the earrings and the pendant themselves are so so alike that I put them together as a set so there's that one it's just so beautiful and I put this on a silver tone chain. It's a nice light chain. You can change it out and do something else if you'd like. But it has a spring ring clasp. It's in good condition just to get it on a chain for you. This chain measures 16 with another 2 inches on that end. So you've got earrings and necklace in that beautiful flower encased lucite. And I'll say 14 for the set. And I'd love to get a little bag for these as well. So thanks for being patient with me when I put them in a bag. I just love that. That way you know too that they're well taken care of. Okay, now we have these clip-ons or screw back and clip-on earrings. I'm trying to get off my inventive <laughs> earring cone, but now they're stuck to the yarn. Okay, these look like they're signed. We have white acrylic shell-shaped, a little bit funky shape like that. That's so cute. So you'd wear them and they would hang like that. And they are signed. They say Napier. So lovely Napier. And the great thing about these is you can adjust them and they clip on. So you can adjust them throughout the day or make them very comfortable. So we have this great pair of Napier earrings and I'll say $8 on those. Next is this pair of earrings that we kind of took a look at before. Now these look, I don't know, I guess that's a brass earring wire. Looks very lovely. This looks like snowflake obsidian. And this looks like a stone, maybe a smoky agate, um, smoky quartz agate stone. Let's see what Miss Prissy says. Are these a stone? They sure are. Oops, kind of slippery. So they're going into all kinds of, I mean, when they go right in the middle of everything, it's hard to tell. They're not going up into the quartz area, but they're definitely stone. And those of you that know your stones, you'll know exactly what they are. But again, I love that they're on these brass wires. and They're so pretty. Gorgeous. I'll say 12 on these. It's a good size gemstone. Um, yeah, they're almost an inch long, just to give you an idea of the size of the stone. And I probably should point out the beautiful bead cap that's on there too, because that looks very nice. So there go those earrings. Those earrings. Now, where are we? I have so much to show you. Okay, we have these gold tone earrings. They are nice. 
I do like them, but they just have a little bit of wear. I'm going to put those in the craft jar. And quickly, let's finish our craft jar, see if we can get this done. So I'm going to put in some real pearls. They, they seem to have like a bit of a coloring to them, maybe a yellow coloring, but they are all real. Definitely really usable for jewelry making. We have these beautiful little bracelets. I don't know what happened to me, why I want to put those in. Um, I'm wondering if they go with this. No, this is much smaller. Hmm. What should I do, guys? Save them for my jewelry sets? I know I'm going to need bracelets. I always do. I'll wait on that, because I have a lot of wonderful things to give you. So these are glass earrings. They might be those froggy pants type earrings. I'm not sure. But I just didn't like the glue on the back as far as selling them as a wearable piece. But they are most certainly perfectly fine earrings if you want to just get that little coloration off. And they are different color glass. See how they're like opaque on the back and clear on the front. So those might be the sterling froggy pants. And this bracelet broke my heart. I cleaned it and hoped it would withstand, you know, the test of being a wearable, sellable piece. But what was it with this one? I think it just had a little bit of wear. Yeah, like see that bead right there? So again, a perfectly beautiful glass bracelet. Wearable for sure. Or you can craft with it. Next is a pair of earrings. They are Monet and they are lovely, but I think there was a rhinestone missing right there. So if you have a yellow stone, you can repair and have Monet, or you can just craft with those. Next are these different beads that I collected together. Put them in this bag. There's some really pretty different beads and things, some real gemstones and just some pretty things. Then we have this owl necklace that is a clock. Look at that, isn't that so cute? Now, why did I want to put it in the craft jar? It does give me a little bit of trouble closing, but it does close, and I don't know why. I think because I don't have a battery for it, so maybe I thought it would be fun to put it in the craft jar. But there you go with your necklace that is also a watch. It's heavy. Then we have a clip-on gold tone. Should be two of these. And yeah, these are marked like a CW something. Just could not figure these out for the life of me. CW something. I don't know. So if you know anything about those, let me know. I think I'll hold on to those for another minute. And this is one of those Goldette bracelets. You can tell by the clasp. It has like the half moon. And it looks like it was a teacher's bracelet with a bunch of cute kids on there. I know that the Goldette bracelets have certain charms that are worth quite a bit. So maybe you need the Goldette bracelet itself to put charms on. Or whichever so I thought I'd put that in there then we have this lovely earring and another one probably has a stone missing or something this is a chain with a Mickey Mouse Pave stone heart it does say Disney on it I think it needs a clasp so that goes in and this piece I don't know what it went to but this is a piece of glass. It's quite beautiful. Really lovely how they made it. It's got like rust colors and green and then some other pieces on there. And this is another piece of whatever it was. So that I thought would be fun to craft with. Now these are heartbreakers. I love these earrings. They're carved mother of pearl on brass. So I know they're older. But I think they have, they have a little chip on them. Yes, right there. 
So just beautiful Art Deco earrings with mother of pearl up there as well. And just a little chip on them. So again, if you want to wear them, go for it. I don't think anyone would notice, but that's up to you. This is the Anka ring. It's a size 8. It has some rhinestones in it. It has that little... Um, it's like a, a bow and arrow kind of sign that goes through an A, or an arrow through an A. So that's how you can tell it's an Anka vintage ring. Quite beautiful. But the rhinestones are a little on the yellow side. I'm not sure if that's on purpose, but I thought I'd put it in the craft jar. It's a size 8. Great shape. Then I have this um, origami owl bracelet. And it's got a stainless steel clasp. I think there's one rhinestone, two rhinestones missing right there, but otherwise it's a lovely piece. So that goes in. Then I have this bracelet that is probably hematite. It has some beautiful scenery on it and some religious things on there, but it just needs a new stretch. So beautiful piece there for sure. And then this is a bracelet that needs a clasp. It's an older, like, diamond cut rope bracelet. This one is, says 1969 on it. Don't know what else to do with that, so that goes in. This is an Avon ring with a little cute chip on it but it just has a little bit of wear, so that goes in. And then we've got a couple of earrings. This beautiful earring, I think there's another one too. But this one needed a wire or something, not sure. And we have a vintage pearl necklace. This is that Hong Kong one. I did clean it the best I could but it just needs help, so maybe you could use the pearls. This guy, don't know what this is, some kind of shells with gold tone on them. The gold is in great shape. The chain is actually really nice too. The chain looks silver tone. I think I might just because this is a craft item. I might keep the chain to put another pendant on. Oh, I can't because it's attached to that. All right, so that's why I didn't do it before. Okay, that goes in. Beautiful earring. Look at this. Only one of them. And it's that type that clips on the back. Lovely. And another necklace I think. Oh wait a minute, I think I'm making a mistake with this one. So Pandora is something I'm learning about. I have to figure that one out. But this is acrylic on an older chain and some of the wires are coming undone. Otherwise I love this piece. I like a green tint to those. The clasp is there and everything. It just needs a little help. Then we have this I think this is one of those gold filled bracelets, but it's got a little wear. This is kind of big. It's, it could be an anklet or a bracelet. And this one I've had for so many years. I bought it at the thrift years ago. And I don't know. It, it's hard when you test for 10 karat gold because everything looks like it is. So I don't know, but I'm not gonna say that it is. It could just be a nice gold tone bracelet that has um, some wear on it. A little earring, cute little vintage adjustable faux pearl ring. And this clip-on, what's special about this guy? Um, this test as silver, but maybe like an 850 silver. So that was cool. Now, I, let's see, can I top it off with something else? Oh yes, I've got tons of things, so. This I think is called Amazonite, this blue color stone. Very beautiful, but the stretch isn't good. 
But look at those stones, just stunning. Put that on and another bracelet, but it just has some wear on it. I tried to clean it off and I just wasn't happy with it. So purple stones, silver tone bracelet. And I think that's good, I think we did it. So we've got our Dinah craft jar all filled up. And I'll say 25 on this. Just let me know you want the Dinah craft jar. I'll put some bubble wrap on the top and ship it to you very safely. These are not glass jars, they're plastic, but they have the sparkle of glass, so I love these. So there you go with the Dinah craft jar. I know it's gonna be a little bit of a long video, but I can't help that. So this necklace still has the tags on it, and it says made in India. It's a beautiful chip necklace. Um, all kinds of green stones woven, crocheted together. It's so pretty. Um, show it to you on the Buster Boy. So there you go. It's just a lovely piece. Um, again, all crocheted together. And it's probably, you know, when things test in the green range. Could be that chrysophrase or not sure but it's so pretty oh let me measure it it is 26 inches gorgeous green color and i'll say 12 dollars on that piece next is this turquoise necklace i think it's turquoise um, my gem app tells me that it is but i can't promise I can only show you the stones, how beautiful they are. They feel very cold. And I think these are pieces of red coral in between. It's a very stunning piece. And I think the clasp is sterling. I'm gonna check it right now, but wow. And I know that these turquoise necklaces, the older ones like this with all these different colors, they can go for a lot, but I just don't have the time to put everything on eBay. So I don't know. I'm going to have to count on you to decide if you think this is turquoise, because it's very difficult to really tell. But in everything that I test with, it says that it is, and that's red coral. So quite gorgeous, and I think older as well with that hook clasp. This measures about 16 and a half, 17 inches. And let's take these two pieces and see if they are sterling because I didn't see any marks on this one. And it was not magnetic. So we're gonna try this necklace, see if it's sterling. Just a little bit on the toggle. Don't need a lot, you don't have to like grind away. I hate to do this at all to any jewelry. Let me also say that when I go to test the, the clasps, I'll do this end of it. If this is a solid piece and it's all one piece, I would rather test over here where it is not going to be seen than over here. So if you do jewelry and you're testing the metal, maybe that's a little tip for you as well. So that's the two clasps. And again, on the pendant, I'm going to move this aside and I'm going to take my sample from up here where it won't show. And so far, I'm not seeing any brass color show up. I'm looking at the pendant and here's where I tested it, just so you can see. Right there. Oh boy, let me get it in focus first and then bring it over. That seems to work better for me. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, I tried to do it. There you go. So now I can just pull that over there. Also, let me, let me just talk about this for a minute because this is important. I can also take a silver buffing rag and just take that place where I tested it. And I think we owe people this when we do test metal to go back over and make it look nice. So I just did that with the polishing rag and it's good as new. So just some little tips. 
about what you might do when you're testing. So that's for the monogram necklace. And then I'll take this piece and we will test it. Let's see, this one isn't gonna be as easy to do the other side. Yes, it will. Okay, so I can turn that that way and test it on the other end of the clasp. And again, on this one, instead of doing it here, I'll do it over here. Okay, now let's get our solution. I've learned to really shake this now. And even if I can, little paper towel so I got the first dot of it out of the little bubble there so we don't get any old solution in the the little tip of the bottle is what I'm trying to get at so here we go with our 18k and so far everything is turning a lovely blue so it's all sterling there's your blue on that and your blue on that that's cool that is so cool it really makes me wonder about this turquoise necklace. I mean, they just go for all kinds of different prices. Some of them go for so much. So here we go. Monogram, sterling silver, all the findings. Um, I'll say 15 on this. And if you need a weight on that, it is quite thick. So I think we'll just go with that 15 on that. And then our possibly turquoise necklace. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, um, I'm gonna say 55 on this. I think that's a great price. I agonized for so long over what to price this at that I just didn't offer it. So there comes a point where you have to just say, Okay, here you go. This is what I see. It's sterling and 55. And we'll see what happens with that one, okay? I do have so much more to show you. I wanted to show you that this is the... How can I get it in here? This is the state of the rest of the 45-pound bag, okay? The things that went into bags that needed more research, that needed to be priced... There's still a lot of jewelry, but I want to move on to another bag. However, I want to make those pieces available to you, too, that you saw on the videos and that you love. So, let's see. I do have a couple more pieces here I meant to offer. Okay, some are from this lot and some are not. This is that bracelet that is made of... Don't let me forget it now. Starts with a P. Some kind of pyrite. It's a pyrite bracelet. So thank you all of you that helped me to know this was pyrite. Now I can't remember if it was like real metal or anything. But nonetheless, it is the pyrite bracelet that we all saw together. It measures six and three quarters. And I can finally price this one at $5. There's that one. Now, this piece, I think I've just had a very long time. It's one of those gemstone bracelets that's on uh, 120th 12 karat gold filled. It is the scarab bracelet, and it does have the safety chain. The safety chain just needs to be reconnected to, let me see, let me get it this way. So here's the safety chain, and there's your little clasp over there that also says 120th 12 karat. And it just needs to be reattached right there. That's all it needs. This is marked 120th 12 karat, and there's all your gemstones. So scarab bracelet, real gemstones, and real pearls. And the measurement on this is six and three quarters. You have your tiger's eye, your rose or strawberry quartz. I don't know what you'd call the green one. Carnelian and this other dark green one. So there you go on that bracelet. Gold filled and I'll say 
16 on this piece. Also have this cross necklace that is hanging on my necklace thing over there. And I thought it was cool. It's 18 karat gold filled or plated. I'm sorry, 18 karat gold plated. It says it right here on the class. 18K GP. And it's a cross. And the pendant doesn't move. It just sits right there where it is. So I thought this was very lovely. See that? Isn't that so pretty? So 18 karat gold plated. I'll give it a measurement. It is 18 inches. And I'll say $12 on that. There's just so many pieces to show you and to offer you that came out of that bag and pieces that I just have. Another bracelet, vintage, faux pearl, gorgeous. This one had some vertigree issues on the back, so I cleaned it off. And then I touched it up with that gold paint. So I'm not sure how it's going to wear because I've never tried that. But I did tell you if I ever use it, I will definitely tell you. It did come out nicely. Um, it measures six and three quarters. Beautiful quality. And I'll say... Um, let's just do seven on this because I did touch it up with the paint and I just don't, you know, I don't know how long that lasts. I hope it lasts forever, but that's that one. And, oh, our earring thing is all empty except for these blue rhinestone earrings. So beautiful. Sometimes I have to put them on quite well so that if this falls over, they don't fall off of it. But I think I'm going to have to come up with a new cover for this earring cone or just go back to my board. These are lovely blue rhinestone quality, rhodium plated. Look at the color of those. Oh my. Such a rich, deep blue color. There's the back. And they are screwbacks. And I'll say 16 on these. These are beautiful vintage rhodium plated earrings. So that's that one. I could go for hours, but I have to go. And then I will, I'm going to put this in the craft jar. It's an earring that lost its other things. And then last but not least, oh, I have so much to show you. This is a really nice gold filled necklace. It is like the serpentine, I guess. It's just a beautiful piece. It's marked right here. Um, on the other side, sorry. And it says 14K on one side and GF on the other. So it doesn't say 120th, it just says 14 karat gold filled. But it's a beautiful necklace for sure. It's in great condition. I thought someone might really love that. It's 20 inches long and just a lovely piece. 20 inch necklace. You get the look of gold and it is gold filled, which they say is worth more than sterling. So 20 inches on that, and I'll say $20 for that necklace, okay? I have so much more gemstones, coral, pearls, um, that whole tray. I have this bag that has those sterling silver necklaces in it that we found together. Beautiful things all from my necklace hanger thingy. So much more to show you. So I'm going to have to go for now. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to start my thumbnail. I can get this off now. We finished the fourth bag. I'm so happy. So I'm going to make a beautiful picture. I always do this with the bags and take it out. And I hope you like my thumbnail. I hope you click on it and come in and see what we've got this time 
from this 45 pound grand finale. I may have one more episode where I offer the rest of the pieces for sale, or maybe I'll just sneak those pieces in with other unboxings, don't know. But I'm so anxious to start the Rich Box Poor Box series where I open a really expensive uh, bag, box of jewelry and compare it with a very inexpensive box. So I've been talking about that for a while and I can't wait to get to that. So thank you all very much for joining me. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for your purchases, your comments, your support. I'll be coming up on one year on YouTube. I can't even believe it. One more quick way to purchase. Just email me at capecodebaygirl at gmail.com and send me the video name with episode number, the timestamps, the brief description, and the price. So there won't be any delay, okay? And thank you so much for joining me. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment if you're a new subscriber. Or leave me any comment you'd like to. I'd love to listen. Listen. I love to listen to your comments. I love to read them and respond to them all. So thank you, everybody. And click the bell so you'll be notified, especially with these new videos coming out, okay? So, hey, we'll see you next time. Thumbs up at the bobbles. Bye.